All right, folks, here we go. Uh, Adobe Illustrator, what you need to know. So this will be a quick run through. It'll help you get started using Adobe Illustrator. Super powerful program. I use it all the time. Um, it's kind of a, a standard for a lot of folks, but we're just going to get into the basics. So here we've got the program open. Not a lot going on. Let's go ahead and get something started. We can go to File, New, and it will bring up, let's see, New Document. Um, I'm going to call this class test. And pay attention to your units. Oftentimes it will default to points. I think those are super weird. Centimeters are especially useful if you're working with maps and map scale. We're just going to go ahead and inch with inches and make it simple. We've got a letter size piece of paper, which is 11 by, or 8.5 by 11. We can alternate between landscape and portrait. I'm going to do landscape for now. All right. Here we go, we've got our piece of paper. So first of all, there's a lot going on here. You've got this toolbar on the left with all of these really complicated looking tools. We're just gonna use a few of them. We don't need to worry so much about the stuff at the, on the right at this point. Um, this guy right here, your selection, this black arrow, that's gonna be one of your best friends. Um, but for now, we're gonna get started actually drawing some shapes. So. When we look at the toolbar, notice that there's these little sub arrows in the corners of all of these tools. What that means is that there's even more of a menu buried underneath that icon. So if we go to the rectangle tool and hold a click down, so click and hold, it will bring up all these other options. So star tool, polygon, ellipse, round the ellipse, rectangle. We can draw any of those shapes. We're just gonna stick with rectangle for now. I would guess that you guys have drawn a rectangle before, so you click and drag, and you can draw, you know, of course, a rectangle of any size that you'd want. And we can click on our selection tool here. We can deselect by just clicking out on the open. We can click our um, rectangle and select it. We can click and drag and move, move it around where we need to. Um, one trick I'd like to show you is um, the shift key will become really helpful in Adobe Illustrator. So if we draw a rectangle and we start drawing it and then we hold down the shift key, it will actually force us into a one-to-one -one proportion, which means it will force you to draw a perfect square, which can be really helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a square here. Um, I'm going to go back to my selection tool, unselect it, and now we've got a long skinny rectangle and a little square. Um, Another tool I want to look at just quickly is our line segment tool. This just draws a straight line, so two-dimensional line, and you can press to start the line, and you can move your cursor around holding the click down, and when you let go of the click, it will draw your line. Um, again, you can unselect it, select it again, drag it around as you need. It can do whatever you want. You can also select it and use the directional arrows. Here I'm holding down the right arrow and then holding down the down arrow. So you can nudge it around using the arrows if you want a little more precise control. But I'm going to go ahead and hit the delete key and that thing's going to go away. So um, you can go ahead and experiment with this. If we bring up the ellipse tool, we've changed that to ellipse. Um, you can draw ovals. Um, in a similar manner to drawing a square, if you hold down the shift key, it will actually force your oval to be a perfect circle. So here we've got a couple, a uh, couple of more shapes going on. Um, I guess I'm going to leave the, I'm going to leave the circle live here. I'm going to click on this ellipse as a selected delete key goes away. So when we look at these polygons, they have two things going on. They've got this color that we would call the fill or the inside. And then they have this border, which is shown here in black. So in graphic design, we refer to that as the fill. And so let's mess with the fill color. We can see rectangle is selected. We'll do our drop down box. We can select all these different colors. There's thousands and thousands and hundreds of grillions of colors in, in Adobe Illustrator. Um, we'll just go ahead and select orange for now. So that's our fill. But the little outline that's there in black is what we call a stroke. So we can make our stroke be whatever color we want. Let's make it blue. So we're making a BSU themed square here. It's a light color, doesn't show up too well. Um, 
we could make it um, maybe green might stand out a little bit more but it's a thin line and it turns out we can we can modify the thickness of that line by selecting our polygon we can either do use the drop down menu but this is your stroke weight or width and as I go ahead and, and increase the width, you can see the outline gets really thick, up to some pretty absurd thickness here. Um, I'm more comfortable working with something pretty, fairly thin. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to have a three-point black stroke for my shape. Now, that can, can get you pretty far, it turns out. Um, when you when your object is selected, and actually I'm gonna I'm gonna need some room, so I'm gonna go ahead and select my circle and delete it. When this is selected, notice that all these little grabber points show up, and as I move my cursor over them, they it changes shape. So if I grab here on just one side, I can select it and drag and and modify that shape in one direction. Um, and I could do the same here at the top, right? Stretch it out. Um, Let's say I didn't like that. One of the most useful shortcuts in Adobe Illustrator is Control-Z, um, which is essentially undo. So holding the Control button, I can tap Z. And it, re it undoes that movement. I can do it again, and it takes me one step back. So now I'm back to my original square. Also, you can grab the corner here and stretch it. Like we had done before, again, if we hold down the shift key, it's going to force us to, to have a perfect square. So we'll have our um, we'll have our, our rectangle just look like this. A um, couple of other things. I'm going to shift and, and look at this other rectangle for a second. We'll give it a fill, a yellow fill, and a let's say a four point. Oh, I don't know, hot pink, hot pink stroke. So now we've got. A rectangle with a stroke and again as we select it and we move our cursor around notice it changes shape and as I have it right now it's this little rounded corner that's an important shape that means rotate or that's an important um, icon and so as I hold my click I can rotate my shape at any angle I want sometimes you want to be a little more specific so um, we can actually use the shift key again. So if I hold the shift key down while I'm rotating, it actually limits my shape in 45 degree increments. So pretty useful there. So those are some basic ways to manipulate shapes. Um, now I want to take a second and focus on stroke. I'm going to make the stroke here a little bit thicker. And I mentioned there's so many things you can do in Adobe Illustrator. We're really just going to look at some of the basics. So to mess with our stroke, I want to bring up our special stroke window. So if we go to window, we open that up. There's all kinds of options. We're going to go down to stroke. And it will bring up a box that's specific to ways to manipulate the stroke. Bam, here we go. So here's all this stuff. Again, a lot of it's pretty crazy. Um, we're just going to do some basics. One thing that in geology we often want to do is draw a dashed line. So as our image is selected, we've got our little selection shown. I can click the dashed line box and it will draw a dashed line. And we can actually have the dashes. Let's say I want the dashes to be 40 points long and the gaps between them to be one point. So you can see what that would look like there. Um, we could do something a little more even, five point of a dash, the five point gap. Um, you can really mess with this however you'd like. Oh, excuse me, I hit the delete key. I didn't mean to do that. So a ten point, um, ten point dash with a five point gap. That's pretty good. Ugh, delete key again, excuse me. Um, so so we've modified our stroke. Um, if we actually draw an arrow, there's another cool thing you can, or draw a line, excuse me. There's a cool thing we can do. We'll click to select and, and drag our drag our mouse where we'd like that line. I don't want it to be dashed, so I'm going to unselect that. But we can actually add arrowheads to either side, um, to the front and the back of that line. So. I just press Control Z to undo those. I'm going to select that and press the delete key. It's going to go away. 
The next thing, the next thing I want to talk to you about is um, the order of shapes. So it turns out every time you add a new shape, it adds it to the top of the pile. And by that, I mean there's a stacking relationship. So I drew this long rectangle first, and we can see that it's now shown behind this orange rectangle. But we might not want that. So we can always right click on that shape, arrange, and bring to front. So that will now bring our yellow rectangle to the front of the pile. And now we can see it's on top. So let's go ahead and add a new shape. I'm going to add a circle here. I'm holding down the shift key so I can draw a nice circle. I just drew it so it's now the top of the pile. I don't like that yellow color. I'm going to make it a green circle. Um, we'll give it a stroke of blue. Um, we can do a few more things with it. I can have it selected here. Notice that there's um, opacity, so I can make this transparent. As I mess with this slider here, we'll do 50% transparency. And it's a circle you can actually see through. Uh, control Z, I'm going to go back to regular. Um, and now there are circles in the way of everything. I'm actually going to right click, arrange, and send that bad boy to the back of the pile. So now that circle is stacked behind all of those different shapes. And that's a, a pretty good introduction. So I have a, a very specific kind of assignment I want you to do. Uh, I will have that outlined in, you'll see that assignment posted in Blackboard. It will use just these um, tricks that you learned in video number one. We'll have a couple more of these to follow up, but not many. Adobe Illustrator is really simple to use. So what I want you to do when it's time to turn in your assignment is you'll file, save as, and save them as an Adobe PDF rather than Adobe Illustrator file. And so if I wanted to save this, um, I would click Adobe PDF, save. It's going to give me some options. This will come up. I would just go ahead and click Save PDF. You can use all of the default settings. It's the simplest way. And that's the easiest way to do it. So um, mess around with the assignment. In the next, in the next video, we're going to talk about combining some of these shapes and actually drawing our own shapes um, and smashing them together and cutting them up and doing some interesting things. So it's a good place to start. Um, also, I mentioned you can use the type tool, so you can also add your name. I click on type. I could say I could put my whoa my name here up on the top, and again, I could modify the font size as needed. I can make this bold. Nope, I can't make it bold. <laughs> um, each font has different things you can do, so um, we'll just go ahead and, and stick with what we've got for now. So I've got my name on my figure. I can drag that name around as much as I want. Um, just like we had done before, I can treat my text in the same way. I can rotate it or I can hold the shift key down to lock it at 45 degrees, or I can let go and rotate it freely. Uh, lots of different ways to manipulate this. So go ahead and save your project and send it off to me. Make sure that you go ahead and see the specifics outlined in your document on Blackboard, and we will get together again very soon. Okay, thanks. Talk to you in a bit. Bye.